Welcome to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic, here with my dogs, Lucy and Bert. Together, we're interviewing cool, creative women entrepreneurs in the pet industry. Do you dream of working alongside your dog? Then sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode to find the inspiration and resources that will help you grow your own dog-inspired business. In this episode, I'm talking to a woman who's made caring for geriatric and special needs pets her business. As you listen, you'll hear how important it is to be passionate about what you do if you want to work with pets. She also talks about various dog sitting apps and the virtual community of pet sitters that she's building so everyone can connect with like-minded pet industry entrepreneurs. Ramsey Timmons is a geriatric and pet care provider. Long before that job title, this former cowgirl studied pre-veterinary medicine. After college, she worked at the best animal hospital in Austin and specialized in anesthesia administration as a surgical veterinary technician for two years. This cowgirl turned city girl now resides in Dallas, Texas, and has 40 families that she provides pet care to regularly. After being in business for three years, Ramsey felt she was still missing a community of fellow pet sitter entrepreneurs. She searched for a community that touched base on environmental, behavioral, and medical techniques, and when she couldn't find that, she created Pet Panor. With her extensive medical experience, Ramsey shares techniques and educational resources to help fellow pet sitters stay on top of their pet sitting game. It's one thing to know how to run a business and another to provide proper pet care. With the Pet Panor community, Ramsey manages to do both. Hey, Ramsey. Hey, Tori. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I was having Thank a little you. doubt as I was reading that. Am I pronouncing Pet Panor correctly? Yes, absolutely. It's, okay. So it's a play on the word entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Because whenever people always ask me what I did, I'm like, I'm a pet sitter. And then, you know what? I came up with it a few years ago. I'm a pet panor, pet sitter, entrepreneur. I love it. You are an (laughs) entrepreneur. And I think like sometimes we all have self-doubt. Like I doubt that I say things correctly, but some people have like self-doubt in what they do for a living. So you should just like claim the, the most respectful title you can think of. And I love that you made one up. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to people start using it. I mean, it, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to start using it because I've kind of been trying to find the right word to use. Sometimes I refer to to people, my peers, as like dog mom bosses or, um, you know, there's a group called Pet Boss Nation, I think. Um, and so I'm always trying to find like the right term. But I think Pet Panor could be it. Yeah, because it's so versatile. It's like an umbrella. It's like you can be a groomer, a dog blogger, a dog sitter, a trainer. Yeah. So many things. You can even be a like... cat person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love cats. <laughs> so, Ramsey, tell us what what do you do all day long? Tell us about your business and what you do. So, my full-time job that I do 24-7, 365 Um, I'm a very flexible on-call schedule. I am a geriatric and special needs pet care provider here in Dallas, Texas, and I service families with animals who are elderly, medically, they they need special medical attention during Mm -hmm. the day, they have um, physical attentions. Basically, if your animal is able to not be seen by a normal dog walker that might pick up your dog with 15 other dogs or someone who you're not sure if they have the proper training. Are they going to injure your dog on accident by walking it too much, by not lifting it properly, by not giving them the medication properly? That's where I come into play because when, when we get dogs, a lot of times we're in our 20s. My husband got my beagle when he was 25, and you're just getting out of college and starting life. And so when you grow up and you start your profession, you start leaving the house a lot longer. And at this point, your dog is elderly. You're not used to having to have that special proper care. Well, that's where I came up with this special technique to come into households 
and professional care to ensure to the owner that, hey, your dog's not gonna do great in a normal boarding facility or with a normal dog walker, but you can hire me to come in and do special things for them. I love that. So I had um, another lab before Lucy and Bert. I had Lola. <laughs> and Lola, she died a couple years ago, but she was 13 and a half when she passed away. Good and long life. So, she, yeah, she had a good long life, and she was a wonderful dog. Um, I got Lucy when Lola was nine years old. So she was, like, pretty elderly when I got this puppy. I don't know how she felt about that. But, like, looking at her, like, she really had a lot of mobility issues. And she had horrible arthritis. And at the end, what kind of did her in was she had a disc that deteriorated in her spine. So so that was pretty much the end for her. But before that even happened, she had a hard time getting around. And, it, you know, I... I never hired a regular dog walker, um, and I never even really had like a dog sitter. I would just have family watch the dogs when I went away, but it would have been so great to have someone who actually specializes in that come and visit her because she didn't need like the, the amount of exercise that a puppy needs, but it still would have been nice for her to have someone to see, someone to love throughout the day if I was gone for a long time. So I think that's, this is just like such a cool niche that you have identified yes absolutely and that story of Lola really kind of hits home because that I had a similar client his name was Opie and he was a 15 year old lab and he was when I first got with him uh, he was able to stand but he had issues walking around and by the time halfway through my extent with them for about eight months he started not being able to get up at all and so me and his mom really powwowed together and got together some medical um, devices their harnesses and he had one for the front end and one for the back end and we would lift him and his owner actually ordered this special large wagon because dog strollers. I love dog strollers, by the way, weren't big enough for him. So we had this big wagon and mind you, they live in downtown Dallas. So I would go visit Opie and he was there mentally. So that's what's yeah. so sad is a lot of times when your resources are so limited to people with special medical care that can come in and take care of your pet, they're there mentally. And sometimes you put down your animal because you, it, it is inhumane to leave them sitting there in their feces all day. Yeah. However, when they're there mentally and you're not ready, I provide a service that allows your dog to live a dignified, longer, healthier life than what I feel like anybody else can offer because I care. If your dog were to poop on themselves, I would clean them up gladly you know, clean up yeah. any, I don't want them laying there. That's not, I, I feel like dignity is the best medication for these animals at that point, because they understand that they're not able to do stuff. The, the, the only thing a dog wants to do is be your best friend and go on walks. And once those things kind of start to deteriorate physically, but they're not deteriorated mentally, it's, you become torn as an owner and that becomes very sad. So just knowing that there is a service out there for people to come in. And like you said, Lola had um, arthritis in the hip display or the, mm -hmm. the disc. Yeah. I know when to text my owners and say, hey, like uh, right now, currently, I have a, a chow with a degenerative, painfully degenerative eye disease in both eyes. He's had surgery. I know whenever he's pawing at it, I need to give him a tramadol. So I text mom mm -hmm. and I go, hey, you know what? Charlie's exhibiting signs of pain. Let's do it. Because I'm wiping the eye and that should cause any itch to go away a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when he's continuously, that's a sign of pain. And I'm educated enough with that in my medical background to know, hey, this dog's exhibiting pain. Let's help him how we can. So that being said, I'm almost like an in-home hospice care for some of my animals. And it's really bittersweet. It's, but it's, it's amazing, though. It, it makes me feel very fulfilled. And another thing that I like to provide all of my clients is I only take them on if their special needs are geriatric. But my slogan on my business card is quality care for your animals or quality care for your pets, affordable for their humans. Because I never, ever, ever 
they're already paying enough in medical bills. Yes. I never want someone to have to not be able to afford for their animal to live a few months longer so that they can mentally get ready and prepare for that. Because sometimes these diseases come on very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a little lump turns into cancer whenever you take your dog in and you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, you know, I have two months left. Or one day they just don't get up anymore and it's really sad. And so... I feel very lucky and blessed that these families even welcome me into their home. And a lot of times, like, we do become very close. Like, I feel like a family member to everyone. And that makes me so happy because that's what I like doing. It, it makes me feel fulfilled. And, like, I bring them their dignity and showing them love and compassion and patience. That's what I provide and that's what I pride myself on doing. And that's what I want to spread around the world sprinkle around confetti or <laughs> sprinkle around kindness like confetti and i want to sprinkle around the best quality of pet care everywhere i can like if i could have a million little ramses all over <laughs> the usa taking care of all the pets like that i think would just be amazing. it would be a better world so we like we only just met probably like a few weeks ago through yeah. in, through instagram um and like you have just been such an amazing presence in my life just for the past few weeks because you've like sent so many dms and you're so supportive and i can tell that you have a huge heart and you're really authentic in everything that you do so i want to talk a little bit about the pet panor community that you've created for other pet sitters um obviously if we could replicate you that would be really awesome (laughs) Yeah, but we can't. And so you're trying to kind of teach your methods to other people. What is that like? And and what inspired you to sort of share the love with other people? You know, after telling people what I did and getting a a response that I wasn't used to, I was, I I was expecting, you know, an eye roll or, Oh, that's cool. But I was getting, Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. So how did you get into that? So you offer this kind of service. People were almost dumbfounded and I'm like, do I need to be sharing this information? Do I need to be sharing my expertises with people? And yeah, I would love to, because a lot of people who love animals might be able to stomach, you know, the diarrhea, the vomiting, the medical, um, they, they, they might even be vet technicians. So, um, anyone with a medical background or even FFA and 4-H kids. So I'm an Mm -hmm. FFA nerd. I, um, had show steers and chickens and my friends had lambs and goats and hogs. And I grew up knowing these large talk about not being able to control a dog or a cat. If you can't control your 1400 pound steer, you know, you're in trouble at the rodeo. So <laughs> just having that, <laughs> that intention with them really helped me guide. And I think that's why I'm so successful with kitty cats and chickens and yeah. dogs, because I have that awareness of this large animal and what makes them happy and if they're hungry and like um I could go on and on about my show steers we used to play like they have personalities I would run up against the fence and like drag a stick and one of my show steers my senior year uh, bandit would just hop along come back <laughs> hop along come back he I'd show up to the ag barn and he'd have a tire around his neck just looking at me like hey <laughs> just playing with his toys in the pen so that being said it made me very aware of their needs mm-hmm. and their wants and their desires and what makes them happy because I was raising them to be beef production, knowing that they were going to a feedlot someday. I wanted to give them an amazing life. And that has just transpired into the in-home pet care because it goes a longer way, I feel like, because these animals are in people's families for, you know, 16 years. You know, it's hard to say goodbye and just having someone like me come in, I feel like gives them a good peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so uh, through your, through your Instagram account, you share a lot of advice about how to be a wonderful pet sitter. What is some of that advice? Like if someone is starting out as a pet sitter or, or, you know, there's so many articles, actually, we just had someone on the podcast who she's had so many different jobs in the pet industry. And one of those was dog walker or pet sitter. And it's a wonderful, you know, 
side gig or side hustle or a source of some extra income for people who love pets but maybe can't commit to doing a full-time job with pets. So like if someone is just starting out and they want to be a pet sitter, what do you tell them? <laughs> I tell them that it is a very fulfilling job, but it is it's it's fun, but it's like any job, there is actual work required. And like I said, it's a lot of communication. So a lot about my blog is I'll put a lot of medical education and a lot of, I, I do put a lot of importance on communication with the owner mm -hmm. because a lot of things get lost in translation. And so what I tell people who want to do this is have patience and know that this isn't just a dog walking gig or pet sitting gig. Someone is entrusting in you their pet's life. Mm -hmm. And that being said, it's, it's fun, but it's not like Uber. Like just because you have a driver's license, you can drive, you know, just because you have a dog leash, you shouldn't be walking dogs. If you don't have the patience, if you don't have the time, if you don't have the responsibility of showing up on time, because unfortunately, in some families, I am the sixth or seventh person that has come through. And the horrific stories I've heard um, just of people showing up, not doing their job, not feeding them, not walking them, leaving them soiled. The list goes on and on. And I'm not saying everybody's like that. But you need to be aware that that's not okay. Right. And when you want to be a pet sitter, if you're looking for extra money, it is a job. It's, it's fun and fulfilling, but it is also a job. And just to remember that you're someone's lifeline, basically. You're giving those owners peace of mind. So, And, and also what I suggest is if you don't know where to start, I will plug – my, um, the so started at was actually care.com. And this was when Rover kind of come out, obviously way pre wag. Um, and that helped me build up a little bit of clientele. And what I also wanted to provide on pet Panor was a little bit of a bridge on how to go out on your own because those third party sites do act as a as an employer. And so they take out taxes, they mm -hmm. take out the percentage that you make. Like I know WAG takes 30%. They'll charge someone $30 for a 30 minute walk, but the walker is only seeing 18. But right. then I think insurance is covered and your taxes and there's other things being taken out. So, right. Sorry to interrupt the interview, but I would love to see what you're doing while you catch up with the Wear WAG Repeat podcast. Take a screenshot of this episode in your podcast player or snap a selfie with your earbuds in. Bonus points if it's on a dog walk and share it to your Instagram stories tagging me at tmystic. I'll keep an eye out for mentions and I would love to give you a shout out from my own account. Okay, now back to the episode. And like they'll say they have a vet on call or something like that, but you have medical experience. So, you know, don't that's not necessarily a huge perk when someone's hiring you because you already know a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And, and like I said, I'll take on clients that are like, I won't rarely will I take on a healthy puppy. Like that will happen if it's a housemate of a geriatric, that's how those families get me. And then if the dog passes, I do still continue to see the puppy, but, um, but to, to save my time, because my time is so particular, mm -hmm. or not particular, but so um, pinpointed on the medical needs, that I love whenever, for instance, I had a really sick dog that ate a piece of a wall, and she had stomach surgery. She was three months old. And lived in downtown Dallas. And so they needed a full-time person to sit there with her for eight hours. And I did. And during that time, I also trained her doing tricks because she was falling behind because she was sick. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. So I wanted to keep her up to date. And so now she's a healthy, young, three-year-old dog at this point. And she goes to regular dog care and has a, a regular a pet sitter. And that's fabulous. That's what I want. I want my time to be people who need me and 
people who can't entrust their animals with someone without the education. Because if it was me, and I'm even whenever I hire someone for my geriatric dog, there are certain questions I ask. You know, um, are you experienced with with giving medication? Because mm-hmm. my dog gets medication, things like that, and. And that's another thing. People should be honest about that as well. If you're not comfortable doing it, tell the owner because we would rather you tell us, hey, I'm not comfortable giving an injection than saying, yeah, I'm comfortable giving an injection, then showing up, not giving the medication, and then the animal gets really sick. And then, you know, you know who loses there is the owner and the animal. Right. And so that's my advice for people who are wanting to do this is just expect that it is a job that there are people out there like me who take it serious where this is my full-time job. This is my 100% bread and butter. And that's what makes me so good at it. And that's what makes me so passionate. So I think as long as you're passionate, you're going to do okay. And just start somewhere. Like I said, care.com and Rover because people can leave real reviews about you. Right. And, you know, and I read reviews. That's oh yeah, me too. Also, as a pet parent, when you hire someone, get references. That's why I don't understand. I understand how WAG works. I don't know if I would ever use it because I'm not educated enough in it, and I'm looking for a more vetted. And so Rover just gives me that option as long and Care.com because I'm able to look more into each person individually first rather than put in a service and then be matched with someone later. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. That's it's so interesting. I've never used WAG, so I didn't realize that's how it was, but I've used Rover and I've actually found a dog sitter that I really like through that. Yeah. That's, I found one for Gracie and I yeah. liked it because I felt like in control of, okay, this is what she's about. These are what her reviews say. That gives me I know what product I'm buying for my pet. Right. I know what care I'm getting. Whereas I feel like the other one, if it really is like Uber, is someone just popping up? Who, who is this person? Yeah. Do they live far? So right. I just need to educate myself better in, the, in, in that app, but I do not operate on that. And so someone who's just starting out, I would suggest maybe using that as a platform. And then those also provide background checks for people, which I right. think is also really important because safety is important too. So, Oh yeah. You don't want some stranger in your home. So no. Yeah. You have to be very careful about having someone in your home, but then also, you know, your things in your home are replaceable, but your dog is not. So you have to be very smart about stuff. So talking about like the business side of things, I'm just wondering, like you're so successful and you have so many regular clients. What do you do any kind of marketing or I imagine it's a lot of word of mouth and, and, you know, maybe you get referrals through care.com or something like that, but do you do any kind of other marketing? No, that's so funny that you say that. I try not to market because if I did, I'm already, I'm so booked already that I'm like, I couldn't, it's got to be like a real deal. Someone is like very ill. Okay. I'll take you on as a new client. Mm -hmm. It has slowly grown from a few people on care.com to me meeting people to, um, meeting people through vet offices because Mm -hmm. my animals are geriatric and I offer the, the pet taxi service and I'll go and actually take them to the vet and sit in there with them at the appointment. Oh yeah, girl. Like I am, I am basically the like Ritz Carlton. (laughs) I'm your dog's assistant whenever you hire me because they deserve it. You know, if you guys are at work and your dog has diabetes and they need blood work and you can't take off work, you know, some bosses don't, they're like, no, I want to be there, give you guys peace of mind. And so through that, I've met people. And then of course, people who go into vet offices have animals who are maybe sick and then maybe they'll get referenced out to me if they, if they're unable to board comfortably there. Um, and like over holiday, we have special needs and geriatric staying with us and I'll be going and seeing some because they just don't do well in boarding facilities. Right. Easier for them to chill at home than well, that's be good. stressed out. That's good advice for people who want to get into this is to have a good relationship with some vets in your area. Yeah, totally. And if you guys have a stomach for it in the care, I wish that more people offered geriatric and special needs care, especially if you went to school, like I just said, FFA, 4-H, if you went to school to study anything science and you have the biology and just the basic knowledge of 
that I think that you would do really well doing that and there's a need for it and oh, yeah. not everyone can do it. And I feel like if you just make that your section, like that was another thing I wanted to touch base on. There's so many different pet care providers. There's dog trainers, there's dog walkers, there's dog sitters, there's groomers, boarders, daycares. There's different sections. We are not all the same. And so I, if I get a regular dog and I say, Hey, you know what? They don't really qualify to be with me. However, so-and-so is a great dog walker. I would love to be able to use those networks and refer people out and then get people. And that's what's kind of worked with the vet. So yeah, people who are wanting to do this, no matter what it is, just be passionate about it. And starting at the vet, if you want to do geriatric and special needs care is definitely a good starting point. Well, and you just touched on niching down. And that is like one of the things that I preach about all the time in my business is that it's so effective to get a really specific niche. Um, and, and I think it's scary to some people to say, well, oh my gosh, that's too specific. I'm going to limit myself. I'm not going to get this and that business because like for me, you know, my business is all about stylish dog moms. You, saw that and it like really connected with you. And now here we are talking and, you know, we're friends already. Yes. And, and you've been a customer of mine and, you know, I'm interviewing you on my show and everything. So it's like a really mutually beneficial relationship and it's wonderful. But if I was just like, another, some site that had like all sorts of different things, you wouldn't see it and be like, oh my God, I have to know her. Cause it would be like just so broad. It's it's hard to appeal to everybody. And so I think it can be really effective to get super duper specific. Like, I don't know. I just off the top of my head, you know, doodles are such a thing on Instagram. Um, and there's all these like dude squads in every different city. I know we have one here in Pittsburgh and I'm sure there's one in Dallas. Yep. Um, so like, what if you were a dog walker or a dog sitter who just specialized in doodles or something like that? I bet you that like all those dude people would recommend you to each other. (laughs) And it would be like such a funny little niche, but like, I think when you start to think about it, you can see how amazingly effective that can be. Oh yeah, absolutely. And especially because their temperament is very, every dog has a different temperament. That's yeah. a, I would definitely suggest anyone that's getting a dog or when you take on a new dog client and you're not familiar with the breed, look them up because they will tell you if they're bossy, if they're <laughs> motherly if they're a little sassy I mean they'll tell you everything that you need to know and it's so funny you know and doodles are a little bit they're stubborn that that comes with the poodle Mm -hmm. um I do have four doodles um golden doodle Bernice poodle yes those are awesome Um, she is so sweet she's crazy she likes to Oh, and I don't know if it, it's got to be the poodle. They love to dumpster dive in my pillows whenever they're at my house. <laughs> so they'll like come into my bedroom and they'll like twirl all around, mess everything up, cry a little bit, and then run back in the living room and like, okay, we're ready to play. It's and I so don't know, it, it has to be the poodle. But that would be a fun niche, like to to do the only doodles. And I think that that would be fun. To well, do there's that. so many doodles. Like, it doesn't have to be a labradoodle. It could be a golden doodle, bird and yeah. doodle, like whatever. <laughs> Yeah, or the, um, we have one, uh, we, our friend has a Wheaton Terrier miniature poodle, a woodle, and she is just a woodle. Adorbs. Yes, a woodle. <laughs> hey, woody woos. Shout oh out my to God. Eleanor. Her so, name's Eleanor, too, and her parents, her dad's British. So he said, hey, Eleanor, Eleanor, I see you. <laughs> So whoever is listening to this and you're going to start this business, so somebody has to do it. Please tag us when you do that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Please do. Cause then I want to, cause then I want to do a pup spotlight. So I did a pup spotlight on Kirk the floof, who is part of the dude squad here in Dallas. And there's a few of them, Nelson and, uh, Oh, they're just, there's a few with some exotic names too. Yeah. And I can't think of them, but yes, they're, they're definitely popping up. They're even selling calendars. Oh, I saw um, on your Instagram, Lucy and Bert's calendar yes. reveal. That's amazing. Congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Yeah, Lucy and Bert are featured in the 2019 Dog TV calendar. And what's really cool about it is that the calendar, I think, is like $14 and $10 of every sale is going to different rescues that we've all chosen. So the rescue, yeah, 75%, 70%. 
amazing. Like that's epic. It's really awesome. Yeah. So um, the charity that that we're supporting with our sales is Action for Animals Humane Society around here where I got Bert from. Bert was in there for over a year. So they definitely deserve all the fundraising that we can do for them because they took great care of him for a long time. So yeah, everybody check that out. You can find that on Dog TV's social media and my social media. But it's it's a really awesome calendar. There's a lot of famous Instagram dogs in there. There's even a chocolate lab on the cover. So I was very excited about that. <laughs> I um, love chocolate. Okay, so I, before we wind things down, I just want to ask you if there's any like apps or programs that you swear by to run your business because it sounds like your schedule is jam packed, and I just want to know how you organize all that. So I am actually old school and kudos to people who do the online scheduling. I have heard of uh, pet time Oh. and it's a subscription that you can get or pet, pet me. Let me look. Hold on. It's on my phone. And basically it's a subscription. If you're a pet sitter, you can go on there and it, time to pet. Oh, so time to pet. Right. And I'm not really sure how it works. One of my other clients, whenever I traveled, she used someone from there. But basically, it allowed them to turn the it allowed the pet sitter to turn their phone into a camera, and then the owner gets on the app on their phone, and then they're able to see the interaction, which I thought was really cool. But I I'm not 100% sure on how it works. But that was just a recent that one that I thought. That sounds very of. cool. And Care.com and Rover will also have scheduling options, but for someone who's out on their own, what what works best for me is a planner that I have that is my brain and it is color coordinated with people. If you're boarding, if they're out of town, if they're a weird, unusual schedule, they're all color coordinated. It's so funny. Every morning before I leave, I take a picture of it on my phone. That's what keeps me on track during the day. But I'm a solo act, and so that's what works for me. Whenever there's a group or people who might want to grow their business, for sure you're going to want to do the online because it makes it easier. But with all of my clients, we're like family, and I text them every Sunday, hey, what's so-and-so schedule? Or if they're on my schedule, hey, I have so-and-so this day to this day. So I'm very good about communication. I feel like Mm -hmm. that's so important. And then texting them versus having to remind them to get online and log in and check it. So that's just what's worked for me. But um, Yeah, texting uh, is always the easiest option. Yeah, and my phone constantly dies during the day, and I don't know if it's because I'm just, like, taking pictures of my animals. I take tons <laughs> of pictures and videos. It's ridiculous because I send them to my owners. So I carry on these battery packs. Like, literally, I have five of them, and I have to constantly recharge my phone at least three times a day because it's insane. They die. Yeah. And so... <laughs> but the dog so photos being, have to happen. It's not an option to, to not have dog photos. So if you are using an app, I highly suggest, because you're going to be on your phone more, like checking for that as well, and, yeah. and probably having to do the check-in through the app as well, like during the visit. Like, did they go to the bathroom? What time was I there? I'm sure that all of that is also in the app, so you'll be on it. So you're going to want like an external battery because you will be on your phone a little bit more and you just don't want it to die because then if you don't have your phone, then you don't have your schedule. And if you don't have your schedule, you better hope that you remembered where you're supposed to be and at what time. Because after I have 40 families, it's not 40 all at once, but it's 40 throughout the year. I have some people I see three times a year, the talking huskies, which will be on pet because they talk. They tell me (laughs) I want to go for a walk. It's amazing. (laughs) But I see them like twice a year and then I have other people that I see every day and right. people. So it just spreads out, but that's what keep. And then on my, fr- or somewhere in my house, I have a list of clients with all of their names, numbers, everything that I need to know. This happened once or twice where I've called my husband like, oh my gosh, the alarm's going off. What's this code for this house? And he'll tell me. So there is an old school reference. And I also highly advise that. So if you have something on your phone, it's probably keeping that there, all that information. But if you're not keeping it on an app and you're doing it old school, like me, it totally helps to have someone have that information. Yeah. In, like, case, in case you forget your login or there's no Wi-Fi or who knows. Oh yeah. And in the city. Oh yeah. Our Wi-Fi, it's like the not, not Wi-Fi, it's the LTE. It mm-hmm. bounces, and so whenever you're in downtown, it's literally hit or miss if your phone's going to work sometimes. So, 
but that's my that's my suggestion is awesome good advice do what works best for everyone do what works best for you and that's what works for me <laughs> i love it well ramsey tell everyone where they can find you on the internet you guys can find me right now at petpreneur on instagram and in 2019 we are going to bring on a collaborator so that it's more of a community voice and someone to come in and talk about different subjects because I'm good at certain subjects, but yeah. not all subjects that might want to be covered. So we should have the blog up and that will be at www.petpreneur.com. But as of right now, we're just on Instagram because it's super accessible. It's free. It's everyone has it. It's easy to get to. And yeah, just follow me to join and I encourage everyone to have a voice because it's a community. And so comment, tag your friends, DM me with questions. I highly recommend it. And I really try to engage with people. So I welcome it. (laughs) Awesome. Well, everyone go reach out to Ramsey, go check out her content. And if you are a pet sitter, definitely reach out. Maybe you can contribute something to the blog when that's up in the future. Who knows? Let's all just collaborate and spread the dog love. (laughs) Thanks so much, Ramsey. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast. You can fetch show notes at wearwagrepeat.com. If you like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, we'll see you around the dog park.